So, uh, yeah, 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 it's kind of been a while, but even so, thank you guys for coming back to Universe X. Um, if you were a fan of the Duel series, the Uni-X matches, we are in another one of those, another installment. This is going to be game two of uh, Monty vs. Justin, Unison Slayers and Masu vs. Set Eleven Green Gotenks. Um, right before we hop into that, just want to let you guys know, if you haven't already, think about joining the Facebook Dragon Ball Super card game group. It's the largest group for the game on social media, and uh, it's just a forum for everything you might want to need. Announcements, creators have been posting on there. Um, the Bandai's even sent spoilers directly to there at this point. It's a huge community and it's always growing. Second, I've got my Discord. That link will be in the description down there. Just join it, talk about stuff. As we build the community, more chatter can happen. And um, yeah, if you like the content, think about subscribing to this channel. And without further ado, let's hop right into game two. Alrighty then, so uh, we're going into game two, and uh, Amani is back to commentate. Hi, I'm back to commentate. And uh, so, yeah, another game of Unison Slayers Amasu versus Set Eleven Green Gotenks. And they're just shuffling up right now, so we can pretty much say anything because ain't nothing happening. I believe that we are playing this match without sides, so the deck should be as originally um, made in game one. So, uh, no other special advantages, just the way that it was. Uh, except that, oh, no, one special advantage. I believe I'm going first this game. This should be interesting. You should be going first because you got super sacked off that cell rip. Oh, yeah. Wow. Let me see my opening hand. Looks awful to start. Let's see how this pans out. Oh, it looks like Amani's hiding his hand from us. I mean, it is what it is. Okay, start with the charge of the God Ceiling or the Mai. Where did you get this art foil? That's interesting. The only okay. one up I can find online. Heroic Prospects to the hand. So that is a Zeno Whiff. Let's see how he gets out of this one. So Zeno Whiff, but that card is definitely pivotal in the game because it just stops Gotenks from applying pressure at all. And that's very important here that he does, in fact, hit the Zeno. That card is not going to make much of a difference. The good news here, though, is with uh, with uh, Zamasu going first this time, Gotenks' power play on turn three won't happen until the normal stage, where even with just Zeno, uh, Zamasu should be able to get awakened and able to properly defend itself. Seems like uh, Justin's actually spending a lot of time on this charge, so it must be a tight hand. Alright, start with a block of Gohan attacking with the Gotenks, and this of course means he has to draw a card. And let's see. Well, he takes one, and then a Goku! Okay. Whoa! His, this is the second game in a row where he hasn't had an optimal turn one play. However, against Zamasu, this Goku isn't going anywhere next turn, so... It's not as punishing as it could be. Against Actually, <laughs> against the Masu, um, if the setup hits as intended, this Goku could get bottom. Ah, back. yeah, you're right, you're right. If you have Cosmic Trader as well as Zeno, and you uh, flip right, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a big if, and ultimately, I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's gonna happen or if it's even necessary. But I feel like for him to have opened with Goku, that would just be the most punishing thing. I am not certain that Amani has it though, so let's see what happens. Amani is not sure if Amani has. It's just he stays not opening up Gotenks and or Goten and Trump. Charge Sensu. Right. Charge hand must be tight. Not a <laughs> tight hands all around this game. All right, let's see. We oh, are gross. fishing for the Zeno. Start with the attack. Oh, gross. We are fishing for the Zeno. Now, of course, the attacking first doesn't matter if he intends to awaken and bottom deck, because he doesn't need to gain dual attack, but we'll see what happens. Does he hit this? Get this go kill off the board, or is he passing? Or, yeah, oh, yeah, you were fishing. There's Zeno, so he did hit Zeno. Flips up Dimension Magic and passes. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's all right. 
I said it was a perfect opening. But at least this time, we have the Zeno on time. He went first, so the Zeno should be safe from being destroyed immediately. I predict a likely three damage on it. I don't, I don't think it's impossible. And that means we're gonna play. We're gonna we're gonna get a game on the left side. Let's see if the right side has it. Why just second Goku? Goodness. These hands are wild. <laughs> All right, but at we, least you guys both hit. We did hit the unison on time, so at least there's that. And that's going to give him a massive amount of cards. One from the top, one from the life. Get his energy back. Then he's going to get one from his leader swing. And if he resolves, go kill. That's two more cards. So he can create a massive hand advantage here. Never punished. There it is. It's going for the Zeno. Mm -hmm. I think this. I, I I do think Zeno is safe here. I think it would be really awkward for him to choose to attack with the Goku and the Unison and use his leader effect just to get rid of it, and because that may or may not set Amani back, but that would definitely stop this turn's progression. Yeah, if he had the TP Go tanks, it could be potentially a hairy situation. Yeah, so it looks like he's going for the lead up. Oh, Amani just picked up Cosmic Trader. <laughs> <clears throat> Never lucky. All right. A little surprising he attacks the leader though, but. Yeah, it's... All right, it goes to go kill pop. Yeah, why did he attack the leader now that I'm thinking about? Giving you an extra card in hand when you're clearly trying to fish to put your hand together. Not taking down Zeno. I don't know, there's gotta be some reason to play. I have faith in uh, Justin's lines, but like, I just don't. It's hard to see from here what the line of thought is. Yeah. At least his hand is stronger than it was last time. He's got fusion pieces. He's going to have his turn three. So that's what's really important here. So there's nothing that Amani can do to stop his turn. So he's going to have that, that strong turn three. His leader's already awakened, so he's not going to experience any massive uh, pressure on this next turn. His unit is at four. Um, and his hands, his hands fat. I mean, I mean, it, he's I starting to, it, add, he's starting to stabilize. It looks like he's starting to stabilize. Uh, well, unfortunately, this is where Zamasu tends to shine here. Now he hit this turn four, and I mean, even through dormant, this unison's probably just going to be cake because. With Justin having just the Gokyo in the graveyard, if he dormants, he can go to three cards in grave. He can't combo, which means any attacks, the next two attacks, if they go to this unison, uh, they're going to go through. So that's just essentially a Monaka play. But he can't play Monaka until he flips. Oh, he flips with uh, all of the energy open. Didn't even and get to untap. That's how this was. There's the Monaka, so he did have it, but of course, as we know, if he had flipped before, he would have lost the double strike. So it had to be sequenced as such, and then he gives it the dual attack, but he is going to be able to take this Vegeta. Yep. That's going to have a huge impact. Y'all get to see the Unison Slayer, and this Unison Slayer is a Masu. And a draw too. Nasty. I just want to see the combo monkey to just finish it off. Show us the perfect turn. You already know, though. He there it is. There's the monkey. There it is. He you see it in the hand. Ah, there it goes. The so, combo of the monkey. Just in case that looked weird for you guys, uh, Justin prematurely moved his uh, unison off the board before the combo step was over. So Amani yeah. comboed the monkey and then just uh, drew two. It's a strong setup. Like Both people are on the board right now, and Justin's actually on the back foot with the loss of his unison. Yeah, he definitely has the card advantage, though, so he's not out yet. And we know he has his turn three, so we know he's going to be able to get that Reaper down. But we saw Amani search that uh, search that prospect at the start of this game, so he's defend he's able to defend his Unison from being destroyed here. So he's going to take the option to play another Unison to get reset up, since he's fully aware that <clears throat> Reaper will probably walk into more than likely just a wasted play. Since it's only a Mai he can destroy and it can't move from better to reset the unison now since that's probably the best use of this turn. Cards, the hands are thick this early in the game. 
Yeah, both of you guys kind of really accelerated here. There he goes. Unison to unison. Mm -hmm. Probably fine to let that one go. Mm -hmm. Does he pull out the TP go to? Because that would be the nuts. Hmm. Activating his bonds of friendship, Goten. Yes, Whoa. sir. Got a chunk set, of course, because that just seems weird to tap his last energy to use bonds of friendship. See what he was going for, but he probably wanted to put the kids on board, maybe to search for another go tanks. It just for the for the number of options he had for that one energy to use it on that when there are, it's one of the only two targets in the deck that's worthy of a trunks probably would go ahead and trunks. Yep. So that's what we're doing here. For those that don't know, if it does hit the field, when it bounces back to the hand, you can search his top five for a Gotenks or a Unison, meaning it could potentially set him up for a very strong next turn if he has a double Weaver play. Yep, yep. and uh, it just came on the screen, so you can also pause if you need to reread, as of all the cards are doing. It's just that it may have seemed like an odd move to Trunks, but just like Amani said, like out of all the options he could have done, it seemed kind of like a weird out there play, and you're tapping out to make a risky play might as well bottleneck it. <laughs> like, shut down whatever was about to happen for momentum's sake. Oh, and, goodness. Yeah. Another Unison Slayer play. He yep. hits another Banaka into a, a Zeno into Banaka into a dual attack. And he's going back at the Unison again. And Justin is letting it happen again. I hate open charge Heroic Prospect. He had to have a strong aggro play. With him. There goes another one. And it's really rough here because at this point, like... Another one! <laughs> yeah. Losing the unison hurt hard, but playing it again and then losing again the exact same way while your opponent gains advantage, like, it, Justin has lost two whole turns. Well, maybe more like one turn. He's lost, like, a whole turn of any push or momentum swing he could have had. Well, he's good enough with the deck to know that if his turn play was to just resummon another unison, he may not have had a strong option to choose from to begin with. So he might just be trying to stop some bleeding here. Or maybe he's setting up for an even bigger play. Regardless, as the uh, as the Zamasu player, I'm always fully aware of the fact that against a power card like Dormant, there's no sense in creating more attackers. So if he can just put his leader through twice for double strike, that's well, probably the most value he's gonna get. So here comes Greatest Fusion. That's the three drop Go Tanks that's gonna remove a marker from the unison when it's played. And this is gonna give Justin a great opportunity to not only find his unison again. Up, oh, there goes that idea but also to really put some counter pressure on the Zeno unison. This Gotenks as a three drop can attack through Heroic Prospect, even though the attack would be negated, it doesn't have to pay to attack with it like the Reaper. So he may be able to get it through. Let's mm -hmm. see where we go. There it goes. Did he attack with his leader already? What did he attack? Was Zeno at five? Start uh, start? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay. So now he's going after the unison again, and a lot of power comes out. Power. You know, so hit, hmm. huh? the uh, the SR from set uh, set eleven does it take off two? The go tanks, the five drop go tanks, does it take off two markers? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think Amani's aware of that, um, and with the max power now returning back to his hand, might be his uh, his best option. So if Justin taps his two, but see now, if Justin taps his two, puts the five drop down, he'll take two from the unison, and then his leader can finish it off if he really wants to. So I don't think there's any saving it here. He is tapping two. It looks like the EX evolved. Oh, another Reaper? Uh, oh, it's a Reaper. Oh, okay. He's going for the Trunks effect again. He misses a second time. Well, half of his targets are in his graveyard. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, it's only it's only two cards. <laughs> we don't know what's in life too. Hmm. Okay. A draw two. Maybe he's just trying to create some board presence so that he can stabilize for uh, a, a, a later turn play. It's not as though Reaper is the easiest card to answer, but he definitely pulls a heroic prospect here. That just puts an end to that turn, essentially. Well, we all know Gotenks. He's not out yet. He's got board presence now, and unless Amani's coming, packing heat with the removals, I don't think there's any chance he's going to clear this board. 
removals, blue, removals, blue. He's got his leader skill, but I, I think that might just be it for removals. Let's see what he does. So he's going plus two with Zeno, he flips a monkey, that's cool. Easy card to put in the discard pal. What is he gonna do with it? Six life with six life. They can hold on to that six life real well. Yeah. Strength of the hand size. I I believe Justin just now has gone below ten cards. I think he's at nine now. I think Amani's pretty high up there. I have two monkeys and drawn two for this leader each turn. <clears throat> I can't tell if that was I saw that he has Master Sand identity in his hand. But I couldn't tell if he's already got the uh, Zen, if he already has sacked his like Zeno. There's a lot of there's a couple dark cards in there, but it's just, it's it's interesting because if it's in there, then the play is immediately waiting until uh, five to try to burst through. Now this is the sickest play. There it is. It's time to go. It looks like he's going on the aggressive here with the baby parasite, the minus five, and that's gonna give his leader fifteen thousand more power for the turn and double, double strike. strike. And then he's going to top it off with his leader's ability to get a dual attack. Also, it allows him to play any mono blue counter he wants to from his hand by discarding two cards instead of paying its cost. So this is going to be a pretty strong, aggressive turn for Armani because this is going to make it very dangerous for Justin to play counters since the, the quality of blue's counter counters has increased significantly since the release of the Golden Avenger Baby. Not not to like jock a little too hard, but like that was honestly one of the cleanest plays I've seen on my Uni X match series so far. Like the plus one from Zeno to take the energy, the freaking tap five to play baby, stack another baby on top of it to go up to six minus five to do all those effects, and then pop the gain energy from Zeno to give his leader dual attack. So the fact this thing is 30k dual attack putting pressure on leader is just insane. And this is just yes. Just for the clarification, guys, um, Amani did not untap and retap his leader, but the reason he just drew an additional card is because he attacked a second time with it, and Justin is now comboing for the second attack to block the 30k double strike. If he would move his big head out of the way, he'd be able to see a little more clearly. So now he's got to create... 10 more K to block this double strike. Justin has safely gone to four life. Um, and there we are. So that'll bring him back to stabilizing at his basically save size hand. He went down one card this turn. So now the baby Unison's going to him for 15 K. At four life, that should effectively take another card out of his life. Okay, so we're at three, and now the Trunks. He's going to have to block this one here. I don't think it's going to be safe for the other two. Unless... No, certainly not. Yes. And he does have he does have board stability. He could easily create uh, a Zeno Cell play here next turn, but his resources feel a little more limited, especially with that counter ability. Baby's counter ability stays until the start of the next turn. So even right now... Amani can play any counters that he needs to for free from his hand by discarding two cards. There's, uh, there's being countered, and there's being countered with a 30k triple strike 8 being put into play, and that's just, it's not balling to me. Snap charge unison to play his last unison. Okay. Starts the turn with a unison. Okay, that's all of his trunks targets. Clearly. He's also that that's a sign. If he's not holding that you're saying just in case the season goes, like he's about to try to close out a game and at three life against Zamasu revving up to full speed. <laughs> Parasites down and Reaper attacks the leader. Starting with the Reaper, definitely the better card to attack with. Um, because now that the baby unison is gone, there is no prospect from one energy. So now he's got full power to attack with whatever he wants to this turn, but Amani's hand is very strong, and he's only just now reaching the five life point. As we all know, with the new super combos, your your combo phase feels twice as strong once you reach four life. So, and Amani, look at oh, just for that brief look at his hand, it seems like a monstrous amount of defense power. 
Justin is just gonna pick at him, take as many cards as he can, get as many cards of his own, see if he can set up a finishing play. If Amana goes to four, that'll put him in range of Zeno Cell. So there's that with two open energy. It's definitely possible. Let's see what he does. Here. Another Reaper. Digging. And oh, applying pressure. Oh, I think he has this in a cell already. I think I saw it in his hand. Well, I was but... talking about that earlier. I thought I could have sworn he flashed it earlier. This is massive board presence to an open board and four life. Let's see how. Let's see if Amani gets out of this. One. And there it is. There's the almighty draw two from the card and draw one from the unison. So he's back to gaining card advantage now. He tapped out against you like it's. Okay, swing it again. Second hit from the Gotes. F. Oh. oh, he called. He had to point that out. There is no more unison on board. He can play it by discarding two cards from his hand. Uh, but that's true, but I guess he just decided not to. Yeah, he plays the Dimension Magic instead. Okay. And there's the next Gotenks. Good catch, good catch. That would have turned the tide way to the wrong direction. Blocking these cards with Prospect. Here comes Combo Phase. Now, here's an interesting one. Amani's got four life left, and... He's keeping, he, he started with the Dimension Magic, but he's keeping the baby hatch in his hand. And I suppose he's doing that intentionally so that he can produce a second turn following this one. So, this is interesting to see. He's going to go max power, trying to reduce the number of cards he's burning here. You also, I think, have at least two more super combos in hand from what I've seen. You might have the whole set. I'm yeah, looking at your hand. Yeah. yeah. The whole set. He's, gone, he's just gone through a tremendous number of cards this game. I just, it just wouldn't... Justin probably thinks it pro, it's the logical idea. It's not wise that he goes in on I guess, why, what is he at, 13, 14 cards now? He probably would just waste his end game where he could easily just get these pokes through. Constant six drops pressure. His leader, he didn't swim his units. Huh? He might have just forgotten. That's not Let's how see. Never Punish works. Let's see that. This is heating up. Well, I mean, it got hot, but... And he still has the power. He hasn't played a single Dormant yet. He still has Dormant. He can rely on One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven swings on board. That's insane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, there it is. So we go with the Zeno. Okay. This is an interesting start. I wonder where he's going with this. He could have tapped five if, if he just wanted to use this. Well, wait a second. I but guess it wouldn't really care about that. It, it wouldn't be wise for the tap five. No way. It'd give Joe just to take four more cards back to his hand. Tap two. So where's he going with it? Flips a blue card. It's five open. A Monaka. <laughs> okay. Draws one. Guess he's looking to go aggressive here. He's gonna pop for dual attack. Interesting. I mean, that's an easy way to break through dormant, but aggressive here. Yeah, if he's got the baby hatch, this is the best time. He goes dormant. He drops another one. Goodness. Yeah, he Justin knows he is not long for this world. <laughs> he's charging Usins to play Unisons. He's dropping dormants to power dormants. There's a Vegeta super combo, but I, I, he can't combo too much here. He's got to know that Justin by now has to have another negate. So even if he gets this attack through, he's only got one more and Justin just negates it. That'll be the end of this. He doesn't even waste his time. He doesn't want to take this attack. He's got clear advantage here. And if he goes in the next turn with the ZL Cell start, and he hits the right card combination, he could close this game next time. Let's see, let's see. Oh, he has so many cards. And so much open energy still. There it is. Rocking, shocking, death ball. Going on a two life. While Amani's at four energy and unable to count. Uh oh. Is that his deck? Oh my god. How many cards is that? Like five? Justin definitely has the Zeno Cell, but now his hand is 
much weaker though. His hand is scuffed. <laughs> there's no, there's barely anything in there. Oh, oh Boone. That's an interesting play. Playing a Boone after a Dorman second attack to create his Arcana leaders again for his tokens. All right, we're gonna go for the untap. He better hit it. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> he got negated from hand and then negated from the top of the deck. Never lucky. He's got it. Now it's all on baby Ash. Goodness. What a space to be in. Mm. Seven attacks, mm. but mm. I, no, you know, now that I think about it, if it's a dual attack quad strike, he's gotta sack the six drops to which means he shouldn't attack with those first. Bring that baby. If that's the case, he's only got he's got to pull two negates. If he doesn't, he's not gonna be able to deal four damage to that. Huh? Money's money. It's a safer spot than than it may have originally looked. It's very. Hmm. Hmm. So we'll go kill him. Gonna get some more fusion pieces. Is he gonna play another Reaper? I guess Blue would be a little greedy, but nothing like creating more attacks if he's just gonna go in the cell. If he doesn't hit the hatch, but I at least have tried to hit the hatch first. Like well, bait out with, he's got a lot of slings to bait with. Well, yeah, that's the problem. If he doesn't deal with the hatch now and it gets played, he may not, with two life, he's not gonna have another turn. So he has to hit it with Zeno Cell in order to stop it from having a chance to resolve. The problem is, how much energy is he going to use with that being his only play remaining? Because if he doesn't hit the baby hatch, it's going to be a rough next turn surviving. Then again, he may or may not have any use for that energy at all. And I don't know if he has another negate in his hand, but I feel like if he kept that dormant, he could have at least thought about having another turn if he forced Baby Hash coming. Mm -hmm. He definitely has one in energy, two in energy, and then he just dropped one and discarded the other. Uh, yeah, so. I'm not sure if I felt like that. I'm, of course, didn't see his full hand, but I'm just not sure if I agree with dropping that other dormant. It, dormant into Sparking Shocking Death Ball was one thing. Dormant into, like, maybe a paid shot. If he was still at three life, this would be a different conversation. But at two, he knows what he's got to do. It's time. For the second time, Justin Rosenberg, drop that Zeno cell and show us the true power of it. There it goes. And he's here, ladies and gentlemen. The most powerful card, in my opinion. Ready to deal some damage? That's a. Let's see how many cards we're doing. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I would be appalled if he hit it up Nikkei's here. I mean, honestly, it's yeah. just. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, and the Monaco was there, so Dormant's not doing anything, really. There it is. She's so got nine cards left. We just saw Monty fan out four cards in his hand. We know he's got the baby hatch. So here we go. We're swinging for the proof. But does he even baby hatch here? Let's see. It does he baby hatch here at four life? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, hey, I'm just saying. If he hits a spark in dimension magic, opens up two energy, he couldn't negate his way around the circle here. There's only one more Zeno Cell attacker. And he can't possibly deal four more damage with this four state. Okay. Ah, there it is. We all knew it was coming. Come on now. Now what did this? Card? You had to show me your dimension magic in hand just so I could see. He definitely has enough negates in his hand. He's got dimension magic. He's got prospect. He's got max power, and he had baby. He definitely has enough. Negates. This is anime logic. He had to answer a secret rare with his own secret rare. Ah, he had the uh, he had the uh, boo volleyball. See, look. See, uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Looks like Justin's giving it up. Nah. But the, once the baby hatch came down, there was nothing else he could do. No, you're right. But we're going to move into game three, and I hope you guys enjoy the commentary here. All right, guys. We'll see you next game.
So, as you can see, we're right here. It's tied up. Um, so many of these games go to game three uh, so far. I got some pretty even, even players, some back and forth games. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, we will be moving right into game three sometime this week. Uh, I'm hoping it's only going to be like a day or two. I'm going to pretty much get the content schedule back on track. So hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next video later.